teacher. Coach. Doctor. Chef. Event planner. Lifeguard. Stylist. Comedian. Contractor. Dentist. Friend. Mentor. Leader. Comforter. Hero. World changer. Dad. Happy Father's Day. It is a good day to be in the house of God. If you're watching just right now, welcome to Ignite Church. And um, can we do one more thing? Can all the dads in the house one more time please stand up to your feet? Every dad in the house, would you please stand to your feet? Now everyone in the house, let's give them a round of applause and show them how much we love them and how much we appreciate them in this day. You may be seated. I know today is a special day. And I'm not trying to be biased because I am a dad, right? But uh, we just celebrated Mother's Day last month, and we love you moms. But today it is Dad's Day. Come on, all the men in the house say, ooh, yeah. It is Dad's Day. And um, I don't have my dad with me today. He actually beat me to heaven, and I miss him every single day. And probably you could probably relate with me if you had, a, you, you know, something similar. But I encourage you, honor your dad. Whether he be living today or he beat you to heaven, honor them. Honor their memory. And remember that there's a reason why God gave you that dad. You know, you might say, I didn't have the best dad in the world. Probably your dad made a lot of mistakes and a lot of wrong choices. But God chose that dad for you for a reason and a purpose. And we are to say, God. God, we honor them today. We recognize our dad. And I encourage you, if you do have your, mom, your dad alive today, go out there, take, take them some honor, show them, you know, your appreciation, make them feel the best dad in the world. Many times we forget to appreciate all that our dads have done for us. I wrote a couple of things here, and probably you identify yourself with some of them, and probably you're like, no, not my dad, right? But for example, the years of working hard to make, you, make sure that you had something to eat and a roof over your head. The years that he took care of you and was, able, was there to pick you up when you had fallen or made a mistake, for teaching you how to drive right for believing in you and even in your crazy projects for playing with you for hearing you out and counseling you but most importantly being a godly example of what a man of God looks like now you might say pastor Eric that that does not add up to who my dad is my dad never uh, taught me how to drive my dad didn't play with me my dad didn't do this and that and like I said don't worry your dad is your dad right so honor them, still celebrate him in this day, because as you are honoring them, you are honoring God. As you are honoring them, you are honoring God. Today I want to talk about God's blueprints. God's blueprints. And I'm going to just share a short word, but I know that this word is really going to minister. This word is not just for dads, this word is for every one of us. Now, how many have ever seen a blueprint? Anybody here know what a blueprint is? There's one on the screen, right? It's like a, a plan, right? It, where an architect or an, a, a designer puts together their design and they put their measurements. They put their vision that they have up here on paper. And blueprints, right, are, are, are very important. How many of you, when, when you start building something that you bought, for example, you bought something at Ikea or, or online, you're the type of person that does not pay attention to instructions. Raise your hand. You do not pay attention to instructions. How many of you actually throw them away, right? You just throw away the instructions. It's funny because um, many times when we do that, we end up going back to the instructions, right? There's always that one little piece. There's always that, what, what in the world? Did these Chinese people forget something? Like, you know, you start thinking about, like, there's always this one little piece. However, blueprints and instruction manuals are given instructions written down by someone who was there before us. That alone could preach. Blueprints are 
written by someone who was there before us. I heard this this week and I made it my own. God has already been in your tomorrow. God has already been in your future. He knows what your future looks like. And for that reason, he left us a set of blueprints. He left us a set of instruction, which is his word. He knows what your life needs. So I encourage you, whatever you are facing today, do not throw away the blueprints. Do not throw away the instructions. You see, the builder of a house starts on paper. They just don't go to a land and say, okay, I'm going to put this wood here and then I'm going to create this frame. And They don't jump into building things. They first start on paper. They write down their thoughts. They write down the dimensions of the house. They write down how many rooms and where the rooms are going to be and the general layout of the home. And without this step, the house would never be built. God is the builder of our lives. He is the author of the blueprints that will shape our future. Too many of us are trying to put the pieces together without going first to his blueprints. We don't understand why we are facing things in life or why does every, sometimes this same situation happen. And we try to figure it out on our own and we always come back to the beginning of like, why is there this extra little piece? We have to go back to the blueprints. Dads, we have to go back to the blueprints to know how God has designed us and he has built us to be dads today. Amen? We have to go back. Parents, super important. We're living in, in critical times where dad and mom need to be united because if you are divided, your children will be destroyed. You have to be united with vision for your family. You have to be united in the word of God because the enemy is united out there to destroy your home. And he does not sleep. The Bible says he is like a roaring lion looking and seeking who to devour. But we serve a mighty God. A giant that has not lost any battle. And he's not going to start losing today. So God is our builder. He is building our lives. Too many dads, unfortunately, we try to be the best dad we can be. But without God's blueprints, we will fail. We will fail. Now, I know for men, sometimes hearing these type of words is hard. Because we have this special pride, let's call it that. We have this special pride, you know. We, gotta, we think within us that we got to be a certain way. We have to carry ourselves a certain way. And it's not machismo ni machista. It's just this thing that every man sometimes thinks that they have to have. You know, like, oh, I'm the man of the house. I'm the, car you know, the, 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 the manly figure. I got to be a certain way. And to a certain, point, uh, certain extent, that is it's true. But without God, you are nothing. Without God, you are nothing. Without God, we are nothing. The Bible is God's blueprints for our lives. It is our instruction manual for the life we are to have here on earth as we get ready for our eternal dwelling in his presence. How many say amen to that? So what does dad, sorry, what does scripture say to dads this morning and to everyone in this house today? What is the main thing God wants us as dads to do? Is it to build an empire and give our children all the wealth we can? That's good. I mean, who doesn't want to leave their children a great empire and, and lots of wealth so that they won't struggle? How many of you saw your parents struggle? Raise your hand. You saw your parents struggle. How many of you probably, you know, because of their struggle, you did not enjoy the things that you have today as an adult? But the things that they did give you, you were appreciative for. The things that they went through taught you today lessons that as you are going through life as an adult, you could look back and say, my mama overcame so I can overcome. If my dad was able to do it, I can do it too. You see, they probably didn't give you all the wealth that they can, but they gave you all the knowledge and wisdom that you have today. And that's worth more than all the money in the world. 
Is it to work hard and leave an, or is it, is it to work hard and to leave that example to our children? Or is it just to put a roof over their heads and food to eat? See, many people think that as parents, we just have to uh, provide for our children. And, and that is true. That is part of parenthood. But it's not the completion of parenthood. If all you're doing is providing them with money and all you're doing is providing them with food, but you're not being there, present, and being intentional as a mom and dad, you are not fulfilling the purpose of God for your life and for their lives. Although these are amazing things, and I believe that for our children, we want to leave them everything we can. Scripture mentions something a bit different. In this verse, you've heard it a million times over and probably heard many preachings on. But it says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Training requires work. How many can say Amen. Training requires work. How many of you train here? Raise your hand. Anybody here, right? The person that raised their hand, they could put it down, right? But uh, <laughs> anybody here train? Like, uh, how many of you have ever trained for something at work, right? Raise your hand. You train for something at work. Probably you're not a physical trainer, but you train for something at work. Training requires work. Training requires instruction. You can't train without instruction. Right? You need instruction, or if you're the trainer, you need to provide instructions. Training also requires, my favorite word, patience. How many can say amen? Training requires patience. As you are being trained, you need to be patient. But as you are training, uh, how many can say, all the parents in the house say amen. You got to be patient. Right? But the pay is beyond words. The Apostle Paul, one of my favorite, favorite apostles in Scripture, understood this when he spoke to the church in Corinth. He spoke to them the importance of what we build and the foundation on which we build upon. The key word there is foundation and building. Remember those two words. There are too many parents today, unfortunately, that are working day in and, and day out. And some of them have two jobs and three jobs. And I admire them. I, I, I mean, I admire them. I, I applaud them because I don't know how you do to have, you know, be able to work so hard and still take care of your children. But some of them, they're just working day in and day out to provide for the families. And this is super important. But many of us lose our sight why God has gifted us with our children. You see, children are a gift of God. They're a gift of God. And what does that mean? They really don't belong to you. They belong to God. You are just a steward with your children. You, you're called to lead them. You're, you're called to advise them. You're called to protect them. But they really don't belong to you. They belong to him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 is when Paul is speaking to the church of Corinth. And listen to these words, he says, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. And another builds on it. But let, let each one take heed how he builds builds on it he's like giving like hey take heed on how you build upon this foundation for no other foundation can anyone lay that which is laid which is Jesus Christ now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold silver precious stones wood hay straw each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is if anyone's work which was has been built on it endures he will receive a reward if anyone's work is burned he will suffer loss but he himself will be saved yet as through fire now apostle paul is talking about 
the foundation, which is Jesus Christ. He's saying that Jesus Christ is our foundation, and we, we, you and I, are God's fellow workers. We are God's field. We're God's building. God is building us up, but at the same time as God is building us up, he has called us to be workers on his field, on the land which the foundation is Jesus Christ. The owner is God. Clear, we have to be clear about that. We are not the owners. The owner is God. And let me tell you something. Once you understand that the owner is God, life will flow more easier. You have less of a burden over your life. Sometimes we're carrying burdens that only God has been called to carry. He didn't care, call you to carry those burdens that don't belong to you. God is the owner. And we're just laborers. We're just laboring. And what we use to build on this foundation could be any material such as gold, silver, precious stones, or wood, hay, and straw. But guess what? No matter what you use, all will be tested by fire. All will be tested by fire. For what? What is the result? If your work endures, if your work endures, you will receive a reward. But if your work is burned up, you will suffer loss but you will be saved yet as through fire. See, our reward is not what we built as much as if it endures. Do I have you with me here? It's not so much as how much we build or how big we build. The question is, will it endure? And, and you know what? How many of you love architecture? Anybody here love architecture? I love architecture. I love going to see different buildings or whenever I go somewhere, I, I love looking, especially if it's like ancient, like, you know, old and stuff like that. And, and through the years of my travel, I had the opportunity to go to Spain a couple years ago and I went to Toledo. Anybody here been to Spain? Anybody here? Have you ever been to Toledo? There's this cathedral in Toledo. It's called Catedral Primada, Primada Santa Maria de Toledo, which is 543 years old since its completion but in reality it's 776 years since its groundbreaking since they first started building it the pictures are coming out I had the opportunity to go a couple years ago and I was just amazed of this architecture that was built so many years ago without the technology that we have today without the knowledge that we have today like the pyramids in Egypt though nobody can replicate those right the beauties that we see but you know what? What catches my attention when I look at these images is the minds that came up with this idea. The people that put it down on a, on a blueprint that said, this is how it's going to look. This is how we're going to build it. This is the material that we need. But I could only imagine if these people were still around <laughs> 776 years later and they would see what they build would they be marveled that what they built is still standing? Still standing. What is the key there? It endured. It endured. The Apostle Paul said it like this. If anyone's work which has been built on it, on what? Jesus Christ. Jesus is the foundation that you need to remember to lay down for your family. Jesus is the foundation that you need to lay down for your life. Jesus is the foundation that you need to remind your children that that is the best foundation and the only foundation that will stand forever. Jesus is the foundation that you need to lay down on your job as well. That The reason why you have that job is because God gifted you that job. Not because you have the knowledge and wisdom, but because God gifted you that job and he gives you the strength every day to carry out whatever you need to carry out on your job. Jesus needs to be the foundation because if Jesus is not the foundation, then it will crumble. But the Apostle Paul says, if it endures, you will receive a reward. But he also said something that I think about. Consider all of the buildings that people worked hard for that today do not stand anymore. They worked hard. They did the same thing, Carlos. They put together their ideas. They put it on paper. They put the blueprints. But it didn't endure. Many times we work so hard. And what we work hard for does not endure. 
Because when the fire tests it out, we build with straw, hay, and wood instead of gold, silver, and precious stones. And who does the gold, silver, and precious stones belong to? God Almighty. As I read this and I started thinking about how we are called as parents, as dads, to build up our family, sometimes we think, well, it's already too late. Probably you're watching online, you're like, it's already too late. My children are grown up. Let me tell you something. It's never too early and it's never too late to start. If you're still breathing, you got time. It's never too late to start building a godly legacy for your children. Jesus Christ is the foundation and he alone is the rock. However, we build upon it and the materials that we use, we pick. It's never too late because you know what? In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 18, we find the prophet Samuel when he was a little boy. And it says, but Samuel ministered before the Lord even as a child wearing a linen ephod. If you have a young child, encourage them to seek the Lord guide them to seek the Lord show them that worshiping the Lord is not in vain that it's not just a song it is a purpose it is a relationship demonstrate it with your life and they will mimic you and as they mimic you they will turn into a relationship with God that when they grow up like the Bible says they will not depart from the way but you know what if we're not careful, if we're not guiding our children, if we're not being there to guide them in the truth, unfortunately, we make innocent mistakes that later on affect the building that we're creating. Because if an architect makes an innocent mistake, what happens to that building? That building becomes unsafe, insecure, and not being able to be habitable. The same thing is with our homes. The same thing is with our relationships. God does not make mistakes. And if we're faithful and consistent with him, he will ensure our success for generations. He will ensure our success for generations. In Hebrews chapter 3 verse 4, for every house is built by someone but he who built all things is God. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, here again, the apostle is kind of reminding us, for we are his workmanship, meaning God is working in us. Do not think that you got to be perfect. Don't feel bad if you've made mistakes. I know sometimes as parents, we blame ourselves a lot of times because of the decisions and choices our children make. Don't blame yourself. You could only guide them. They make their own decisions, their own choices. We too are being, being built. We are being built because we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So let me ask you a question today. What are you building today for your children? What are you building today for your children? Dads in the house, you are very important in your child's life. I know the society... <laughs> tries to take that from us. You know, yesterday we went to eat uh, uh, dinner and uh, I was telling my wife when we were coming back home, it's, in, it's, it's sad that dads are not appreciated as much as moms. If I would have gone to that restaurant on a Mother's Day weekend, it would have been packed, no reservations whatsoever. Dad's weekend, oh, it's just dad. Dads are not valued that much anymore, but God values dads. God values dads, and God reminds us that in his word that he has put power, authority, and a calling upon our lives. I was reading a, a, a document this week, and I found this excerpt that I really liked and it went with the blueprints. It says, our blueprints for living is revealed in the presence of God, in our rising passions, through our emerging paths and through the actions, practices, and habits we establish. You see, it starts not 
with them as much as it starts with you. God wants to work with you. Stop thinking that he's going to work with them or you have to worry about them. He starts working with you. You are the building God is building as well. And as he builds you, you will be encouraged to build your own children. Don't try to build without first seeing his plans. His presence reveals to us his plans. His plans are always going to be higher than your plans. Trust the master architect. Trust in his word for his word will never ever fail you. A godly legacy is far more valuable than any wealth you can leave here on earth. Why? Because there will be one day where every treasure on earth will rot and be destroyed. But God's word will stand forever. Would you please stand to your feet with me? The Apostle Paul again is talking now to Timothy, young Timothy. And I love what he says to Timothy in 2 Timothy verse, chapter 3, verse 15. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now, I don't ever recall hearing the name of Timothy's dad. I could be wrong, but I, I always hear about his mom and and his grandma. But somehow, some way, one of his parents had an important influence in his life. And what was it? To instruct him from his childhood the Word of God. So when he grew old, it would make him wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. You see, church, God has not called us to have it all together, to work hard, to be the best. He's only called us to rely on him, to rest on him, to trust in him. He knows the plans. He's laid them out in his word. All we need to do is go by what the plans say. Don't try to be the architect. Don't try to say, oh, he made a mistake there. I think what he meant was, oh, let's scratch that out. Because the moment you start doing that, it becomes unsafe. It becomes uh, uh, not protected anymore and it could crumble. The question is, what are you building today? Will it endure? Because if it endures, it will last. And if it lasts, you will have reward. But if it's burned up, there is no reward. This calling is for all dads in the house and those watching online as well. What are you building for your children today i know we take this day to honor dads and we will honor but this is a calling from god reminding you you are important to your children you have a calling upon your life that only you can fulfill as the dad of that child of those children so what are you building today it's never too early and it's never too late to start building upon the foundation which is Jesus Christ. Probably today you need to lay that foundation. Re be reminded, hey, that foundation is Jesus. I got to return to him. I got to repent of whatever I've done and ask him to give me the strength. God is with his arms wide open saying, son, daughter, here I am. Let me work in and through your life. With your eyes closed and heads bowed as we close this service this morning, I want to make a prayer for each dad in the house, but also for everyone in the house because everyone is a child, right? Probably there are things that you need to fix with your dad. You've always probably looked down on them because of the decisions and choices they've made in their past. And I came to remind you, you too are not perfect. And if God shows you mercy, you are to show them mercy as well. There's a heavy burden upon the dads. 
a heavy task that only they can carry out. So today and every day, learn to honor them because they're trying their best. For every dad in the house, you probably realize that what you've built has not lasted. I encourage you to start building again, but this time start building upon the foundation which is Jesus Christ. Build your house upon Jesus. Build your house upon the rock that when the waves come and the wind comes and blows, it will not fall apart. That when the fire comes and tries, it will stand. It is Jesus Christ that you need in your house. It is Jesus Christ you need in your relationship with your children. The Bible says that the children will return to their fathers and the fathers will return to their children. And I believe that this is a morning of reconciliation. Probably there are things that you need to deal with and your, your children probably you need to ask for forgiveness or, or children you need to ask for forgiveness to your parents you need to get back together you need to surrender your life to Jesus Christ I'm going to pray for you Father I pray in this morning I don't know the things that might be going on in different homes Father God but you know the situation of every heart God you have called us Lord to rely on you you are the mighty architect the one who has built these plans for our lives your word says I know the plans I have for you says the Lord plans to give you a hope and a future and father god i pray that we will look to you and to your plans for our lives and we will move in that direction and not in our own strength god lord we've made many mistakes in our past lord and we pray for forgiveness in jesus name and i pray lord that as you forgive us lord help us forgive as well lord that we will not hold on to things probably we need to forgive our children we gotta return to being that dad or that mom the return to our children or probably we have to be those children returning to our mom or to our dad and repenting and asking for forgiveness i pray give us the courage to do so and as we do it, Lord, I pray that you will continue to build us as your building, God. For we are your field. We are your building. Thank you for this morning, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Give the Lord a mighty hand clap, praise church. Before we go, at the end of the, uh, back there, we're going to have some piña colada for you guys to enjoy. As we said, we're in our summer vibe series. We have some piña colada. But also, if you are interested in missions, come talk to me. Let's get you signed up. We're going to have a great missions in November. God bless you guys. Happy Father's Day. At Ignite, we believe in spreading the message of Jesus like a wildfire. Thank you for your support. And be sure to check us out on any of our social media platforms at Church Ignite. Until next time, be blessed and remember the best is yet to come.